It is early morning. As they walk along, Bob and Danny can hear the sounds of birds. Why are Bob and Danny here, along the edge of the woods? They're here to look for birds, which are often out early in the morning, searching for food. Look, there's a beautiful bird, and it takes only a moment for Bob and Danny to decide that it's an American goldfinch. How do they know? How can you tell one bird from another? Well, let's think of a bird you've seen many times, the robin. How can you tell that this is a robin? Appearance is one way to identify birds. How does it look? One of the first things we notice about the robin's appearance is its reddish brown breast. Another thing to remember is that the robin is a medium-sized bird. Actions are a second way to identify birds. The robin, for instance, hops along the ground instead of running. Another action that helps to identify the robin is the way it tugs at worms to pull them out of the ground. So actions are a good clue in identifying a bird. A third way to identify birds is by their sounds. By its sound, we can recognize a bird even when we can't see it clearly. Sounds, actions, appearance. Let's see how Danny and Bob compare birds they know, such as the robin, to other birds. There's a bird that has a rusty colored breast, something like the robin's. Is it a robin? No, the rest of its color is blue. It must be a bluebird. Now let's check our bird book to make sure. Yes, here is the bluebird. It is similar in appearance to the robin, but smaller. Both the bluebird and the robin are members of the thrush family. The bluebird has a soft, warbling song. When you know one bird, it's easier to learn about others of the same family. There are two birds that appear to have a very dark color. It looks like a dark purple or bluish black. Is it a blackbird? No, see the actions in flight. This is a beautiful gliding flight. That's the way a swallow flies. Let's see. Dark purple and black in appearance. Actions like a swallow must be, yes, a purple martin, a member of the swallow family. The purple martin is a little smaller than the robin, but is larger than most swallows. And the birdhouse reminds us of another action of purple martins, their habit of nesting in groups. When you see a birdhouse like this one, you will know it was made for purple martins. Listen to the song of the purple martin. So far, most of the birds we have been seeing are of medium size. The bluebird, the purple martin, the robin. Many birds are much smaller than the robin. The nuthatch is one. Notice the unusual actions of the nuthatch. We don't see many birds coming down a tree head first. A kind of quick running or creeping is another action that identifies the nuthatch. Sometimes this bird carries beech nuts or sunflower seeds, which it has picked up. It wedges the food into a crack. Then using its sharp bill like a little hatchet, it cracks the nutter seed. This is the action that gives it the name nuthatch. The nuthatch also looks for insects as he creeps rapidly along the bark. Sometimes he will venture onto the ground. Now we can see the white breast that also helps identify him. In yards or in parks, 
wherever people are, you are likely to find another small bird with a beautiful song. This small brownish bird is a wren. We can learn to know wrens by their sound. Another small bird is the goldfinch we saw once before. A black cap, black wing and tail feathers, and a bright yellow body tell us it's a goldfinch. Day by day, Bob and Danny are learning more ways to observe birds. For instance, they have learned that they must move quietly so as not to frighten away the birds they are trying to see and hear. Sometimes, hovering around flowers, we may see one of the smallest birds there is. A blur of fast-moving wings and a long, thin beak help to identify the ruby-throated hummingbird. This is one of the few birds that has a greenish color. Actions are perhaps the best way to identify this bird. It has a quick darting flight. It can move up, down, forward, or backward as it searches for nectar in flower blossoms. Many of the birds we find in yards and parks are the smaller birds such as we've been seeing. All of these are smaller than the robin. Birds that are larger than the robin, such as the red-tailed hawk, are more likely to be found in open country. Even at a distance, we can see that a hawk is a large bird. Notice the hawk's actions, a gliding, soaring flight with the wings moving only occasionally. As he soars through the air, the hawk looks for small animals in the fields. Watch his action as he sees a mouse. He lands, seizes the mouse in his claws, and carries it up into a tree. Now we can see the sharp hooked beak and powerful wings of the hawk. All hawks are birds of prey. Their food is mostly the meat of animals. Another large bird we're likely to see over open fields is the crow, flying with a steady beat of wings. The loud, sharp call identifies the crow. We often find several crows together. In appearance, the crow is all black, and it is much larger than the robin. Corn is a favorite food of crows, although they also eat many insects. Well, Danny and Bob have been identifying quite a few birds on their various trips, and they've worked out a kind of system for looking at birds. Do you remember how appearance, actions, and sounds are used to identify birds? Let's try a few birds we haven't seen. Can you tell what bird this is? He's black with patches of red in his wings. That's right, a red-winged blackbird. Here's a bird we can identify by its sound. Because it is usually found in meadows and because it sings somewhat like a lark, it is called a meadow lark. Here's one we can identify easily by appearance. Bold colors of white, black, and blue, a long, sharp beak, and a tuft of feathers or crest on his head identify the blue jay. Wherever you live, you will see many birds as you learn to look for them. As you look, keep in mind appearance, actions, sounds. You will have interesting times learning about still other birds and how to identify them.